the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. up bills, buy things, make home improvements, you name it, just call Beneficial Finance. You pick the terms, you pick the payments. So call Beneficial and get that big okay. Beneficial Finance Company. Fred McMurray Show, with Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, ace reporter. A corny song has it that when it's nighttime in Italy, it's Wednesday over here. Well, when it's morning in Hillsdale, it's early afternoon in Glasgow, Scotland. In the cable office in Glasgow, a crisp and elderly Scot is sending a cablegram. We can hardly understand a word he says. Can you? Take it down and send it just like I say, lassie. But there's no such word in the language, man. Send it, I say. How may I send such nonsense? D-O-I-M-U-S-A-M-O-N. Correct. Send it. It's pure gibberish, I tell you. It's Indian. Indian? Aye, America swarms with the savages. Haven't you heard? What sort of Indian? Well, half Indian, half Scottish. Oh, there's no such tribe. An odd Scot. Oh, you're right, man. Patience will wonder at seeing me never having met. <laughs> Send it. I. Sign it, Love Andrew. I've got to catch me a howling aeroplane. Q. Nuth Armand. Q. Nuth Love Andrew. Nope. Three news on on love Andrew. Ah, you in us, Amal and love Andrew. Mason, are you sure this cablegram's for you? It's there. Well, who is love Andrew? Search me. C U I N U S. A-M-O-N. This is no such word. Something is gravely loused up someplace. Let's call George at the office. Let him try it. It doesn't make sense. That's why let's call George. Get him, Get Mr. Harvey. Sammy. We got I it. got it. Oh. Oh, sorry. Hello? Take it's it. It's all yours. Oh. Knucklehead. Hello. Who's a knucklehead? Sammy, why? Well, then maybe he can read a cablegram Patience just got. What's the matter? It's in Arabian or something? What does it say? If I knew what it says, George, I wouldn't ask. Touche? I think it says, Sue in us, Amon. No, no. Sue in us, Amon? Love, Andrew. Love it Andrew. comes from Glasgow, Scotland. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, is it spelled C-U-I-N-U-S-A-M-O-N? Oh, yes. How did you know? Well, look at it. C-U-I-N-C-U-N-U-S-A. 
M O N Monday. C U N U S A Monday. Love Andrew. Next. Why, of course, George. How did you know? Of a dear friend named McMurray. That's how he'd send a cable ground from Scotland. Only pays the rate for one word, see? You save money that way. Oh. Uh, how about dinner tomorrow night, Susan? Wonderful. Where? At your house. Save money that way. <laughs> Love. You may take Andrew. my plate, Patience. Uh, mine too, Patience. Love. Andrew. Well, uh, what's for dessert? A soulful souffle. Oh. Love. Andrew. Patience, stop that muttering. Andrew. Love. Andrew. Must be Mutter's Day. <laughs> Andrew. Patience. Great Scott. You said it. Douglas, Andrew, Donald Bain McLeod. That whole armful of my best china. Oh, I got my hand full with Scotland now. Oh, woe is me. Oh, Patience, what is this? You don't look well. Why should I? I'm dead. Here, uh, sit down. <laughs> now it comes to me like a belt from the blue. You mean Andrew? What am I going to do? Uh, sweep up these broken dishes for a starter. Wait until Andrew McLeod finds out his last relative is nothing but a housekeeper in the land of promise. Well, now what's wrong with being a housekeeper? Andrew McLeod, one of the most distinguished Dutchmen in the business. Why, in Glasgow, the sun rises and sets in that man. Well, maybe he can enjoy lunch in peace anyway. He's a distant uncle by marriage. My folks rest their souls. He used to tell Sir Andrew I was a big operator in the USA. Sir Andrew? In a democracy, patient, your vote is as big as the boss's. Yeah, you tell that to his lordship. His lordship? At least. Pretty big gun in Glasgow, eh? And loaded. You mean his vent? Ruling. And here I am. His nearest akin, weaving my broken way to the almshouse. What am I going to do? First, why don't you sweep up these busted dishes? Then execute your other duties with pride and dignity. Oh, sure. Here's my only remaining relative, rich as the mint, coming across. Only when he finds out I'm the hired help, he won't come across. What would you do in my place? Well, I'd just... Well, I... You would? Well, what would you do in my place? Tell me. Set me free. No. No. What would you do in my place? That's the point. Huh? Patience, you be the lady of the manor while your uncle is here, and I'll be the housekeeper. That a girl, Susan. Bravo. You kidding? I'll be the housekeeper, and George will be the houseman. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Oh, no. You two wage slaves got reference? Oh, now, don't you worry about us. Us? Include me out. And it'll be a nice feature story for the paper when it's over. I won't do it. Uh, this is an assignment, Mr. Harvey. Oh, pulling rank on me, huh? Wait a minute. I never allow the hired help to get into two drugs, you know. Uh, who's going to mind the office while we play Dorothy Burnman of Haddon Hall with three patients here? Now, we'll take turns at the office. Well, over. we'd better take a turn in our little old brains. We've got a screw loose up there, you know. Oh, it will be an interesting experience. Mm. Well, I'm going to like it. Well, uh, whoever is working for whom, get that. I'll get it. Hello? Did you get my cable? My cable? Aye. Who's my cable? McLeod. Oh, are you Mr. McLeod? Sir. Sir? Aye, who is this? Uh, Miss Susan. Uh, eh? I mean, my comps. Uh, I mean... Uh, I mean, you mean your mix up. Eh, I mean, my mix. Uh, I mean... Here, uh, give me that phone. Oh, just a moment, Mr. McCable. Oh, oh the help dear. one gets nowadays. Back to the school, sorry, maid. Uh, hello, Sir Andrew. Sir Andrew? Uh, welcome to the USA, um. Hey, what's this sir business? <laughs> well, things we've both got along in the world, hey. I've been tapped on the shoulder and told to move along, but never by the queen. Uh, where are you, Uncle? At the airport. Send the limousine, will you, girl? I'll send my house, then. Say, put your lordship. Hey, what's this lordship? George, go pick up Sir Andrew at the airport. Uh, didn't the parachute open? Well, ain't we playing turnabout? Yes, beautiful lady, Veer de Veer. I must apologize for him, Miss Tyson. Him and them smart remarks of his. He was struck in the head by a dumb waiter once. <laughs> Allow me to ignite your pipe, Mr. McLeod. Uh, sir? Uh, thank you, my man. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you may clear away the tea thing, Susan. Uh, yes, Mum. I had a Dickens' own time finding you in the telephone book. Somebody said look under Armstrong. How is that? Uh, well, um, 
That's the um, ancestral name of this house. Uh, it uh, mixes up the moochers and gives me a bit of privacy. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Is there anything else in them before I retire? Uh, may I ask a question, Susan? Are ye a hand at cooking haggis? Uh, why, uh... Terrific. A haggis? Uh, Absolutely our specialty around here. Isn't that so, George? Uh, quite so, ma'am. It's a uh, haggis for dinner tomorrow, Susan, and no mistake. Uh, uh yes, ma'am. Ah, you've a genuine Scottish hospitality in the wilds of America here, Patience McGarry. Well, we aim to please, Unc. You're making a bullseye. A compliment, Jean. If I might be excused now. Uh, Mary Susan, mon, uh, Suzanne. Eh? Uh, La Francais. We're not so stupid out here, Uncle, you know. Good night, Mum. Good night, sir. Uh, good night, sir. I'll uh, mulch the flub dub and batten down the grove for the night, Miss Payton. Uh, do that. Uh, good night, you two. A haggis? A haggis. First, catch one hag. But what is it? It's the Scottish national dish, from what I remember, before I was bopped by that dumb waiter. Well, what am I going to do? Uh, change places with patience again. I guess. Well, that isn't the limit. The hot dog of the Highlands, the clam bake of the clans, is to limit it to tops. I, uh... Miss Susan. About this haggis, Pace. Oh, you can do it, Miss Susan. Get in there and fight. What is it? Well, you, you just make it and let me get it. Uh, goodbye. Now, wait, Patience. Wait a minute. I can't make it. Had enough, huh? Oh, shut up. You've got to make it. Her legacy hangs in the balance. Well, I can't do it. That's all. Give up? No. Patience, your uncle will just have to eat hash and like it. Oh, Miss Susan. You aren't going to leave Patience in the lurch, are you? Don't be silly, Patience. No respectable lurch would have you. No, don't worry, Patience. I'll, I'll stick to the finish. The idea at the moment is stick to the Scottish. We've got to keep the old goat happy, Miss Susan. Susan, if this deserving woman here is disinherited yes. merely because you shun your responsibility oh, as quiet, a... quiet, quiet. I'm hurt. Had it, yes. It'll probably cost a fortune. It's an investment in the future. Oh, quiet. I'm hurt. I know what I'll do. I'm wounded. I'll just buy me a nice fat cookbook. It ought to be delicious with gravy and peas, but is it the haggis? There'll be haggis for dinner tomorrow if it kills me. Or somebody. <laughs> I'm strong coming in today, Mr. Harvey. Doubt it. How come? Something cooking. What? Haggis. Haggis? Uh, forget it. You mean that stuff that looks like boiled granite? Have you eaten haggis? Well, Gordy Cameron in my school invites me over to his mom's house for dinner, and I watch them eat it. What's in it? Well, all I can say is if it doesn't make the Scotchman brave, it sure keeps them brave. But brave. Got it. Let it alone, Sammy. Let's not go through that again. Hello. George, do you know what haggis is? All I can say, if it doesn't make the Scotchman brave, it's... a concoction it... of meats and liver and kidneys and other giblets like that, mixed with oatmeal and suet and stuff and cooked in a sheep's stomach. Hmm. Isn't that pretty rough on the sheep? Now, let's not be jolly. Now, I've been through a harrowing experience. Now, think of what the sheep is in for. I've been trying to buy the makings all over. All the butchers I deal with just shake their heads and try to give me a nice soup bone to take home for the dog. What dog? That's just it. They know I haven't got a dog. They, they're feeling sorry for poor little me and trying to be tactful. Tears brim in their eyes. They hint that maybe I ought to give up trying to edit a newspaper and go to work for somebody else. You have gone to work for somebody else. I've got a bag full of nice, ripped soup phones, but no haggis stuff. Well, you'll just have to get back in there and pitch, honey. No. Say la guerre. I won't face those pitying looks anymore. Anyhow, nobody seems to have a sheep stomach. Have you tried a circus sideshow? Oh. Hello. Susan. Lorna Doon. Helen Lassie. Alan... Uh... Sammy. Sammy, would, uh, would Gordy Cameron's mother do cooking, do you think? Would she? She's fresh out of work. Uh, what about her husband? Well, she's a widow lady. And uh, out of work, huh? Last I heard. The last you heard, Sammy, she was in line to understudy Miss Susan Armstrong as Highland Lassie in Mutton, Mutton, Who's Got the Mutton? <laughs> Presenting Miss Sherry Lewis and friend Hush Puppy. Hush Puppy, may I tell you something? What, Sherry? 80% of learning is seeing. Oh, I see. 
School achievement depends upon your ability to learn. Oh, I see. Now, hush, puppy. Your records show that you haven't been doing too well in school. So I see. What might the reason be? Maybe I don't see. Maybe. That's why the American Optometric Association recommends a professional vision examination at least once a year. Back to our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. It seems that Sammy, the copy boy, has a friend whose mother is Scottish. And George, still pretending to be the butler in Susan's house, while Susan pretends to be the housekeeper, is visiting Mrs. Cameron with an eye on having her prepare the haggis, of which patient Scottish uncle is so fond. I understand, Mrs. Cameron, that you're an expert at preparing haggis. Fit for a prince, aye. Well, of course, he'll never live to be king. What's that you're saying? Uh, nothing, madam. Uh, nothing at all. Are you slandering my cooking? Oh, no, no. Are you implying that haggis is not good for you? Oh, no, no. It's food for the gods. I don't cook for the gods. The mortal race is more to my liking. Uh, now, what are you wanting that? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a funny situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fair person with Merriman. Uh, you see, we have to make haggis for a visitor from Scotland. Heelander or Lowlander? Uh, well, I don't know. He's a McLeod. Ah, like my good man himself, Preston. And he loves the haggis. Ah, uh, true believer. Uh, sheep or cow? Uh, old goat. The haggis, you clubhead, the oh. haggis. Oh, uh, well, uh, Miss Susan, the, uh, the, the housekeeper, uh, can't find the necessary ingredients. Simplest thing on earth. Well... Would you come and cook it for us, Mrs. Cameron? For old Lang Syne or something? Uh, for a small fee, being a poor woman. Oh, naturally, that. And old Lang Syne. Aye. And the Heelander. Aye. Aye, lad. Aye. 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 Here you are, Bonnie. Thank you. And the patients will mix the oatmeal with the onion and the suet. Well, the first time I ever took orders in my own bailiwick. And remember, my reputation as a hostess and heiress are at stake. Steak? What I'd give for a thick, juicy steak. Susan, do you mean we've got to eat this haggis just because Andy McLeod is infatuated with the stuff? It'll make a man of you, lad. I don't want to be a man at such a price. I want to remain a guileless, healing laddie. I... Now, don't mimic Bonnie, George. Haggis. Andrew McLeod wants us to dine with him. Never. Well, we have to do it for patience. Aye. Stop mimicking Bonnie. Ah, uh, you're not mimicking Baron. It's the irresistible charm of Scotland and us. Aye, Bonnie. Aye. Ah, behold, would you? The haggis. Uh, it looks uh, lovely. Uh, yes, I, I just remembered. I, uh, I've got to report to my probation officer. You don't have to go tonight, George. Sit down. Uh, yes, Mom. Uh, now, where were we, Unc? The haggis. Testimony of our national gift for making the most out of little. In Scotland, we bring the haggis into the dining room with the scuttle of the bagpipes. Uh, what did you play? A, a dirge? Eh, hey, George? Uh, well, uh, shall we dig in, folk? Yeah, six feet down and bury the stuff. George, leave the table. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, sit down. I wasn't gone too long, was I? Patience, what on earth ails the poor man? <laughs> well, uh, he's in love. Ain't saying who. Patience. But dig in, folks. No standing on ceremony here. Well, how is it, sir? Ah. Uh, no, uh, here, sir, uh, have my share, too. Oh, same here. Nay, nay. Uh, oh, please. I, I, I decline. Oh, we insist. You've got to sample the miracle you've wrought, Susan. Oh, me? Uh, go on, Susan. Eat hearty. Uh, dare go first. All together, then, like a toast. To the 45. What's that? It is the date of our great bonnie Prince Charles' rebellion against the Hanoverian tyrant. 
George, stop clamping your teeth. To the 45, then. George, open your eyes. Be a man. Eat. Mm. <laughs> well, here goes. Pure paradise. How about you, folk? Uh, mm, mm, mm. Susan? Goodness. It's good. It's a masterpiece. George, you frowning brute. Hey, hey, it is good. Give me elbow room. I am eating. <laughs> Patience, that was a bonny dinner, I. Hit the spot, all right. Susan, you did marvelous. Oh, nothing, Terry. Very simple. Yeah, especially at the house. How could we miss? <laughs> I'm grateful to you, Patience. Swell. Only you know it still puzzles me why this place is listed under the name of Armstrong. A comer for the life Anybody of... Anybody for some after-dinner music? If you sing, and if you sing as bonny as you look, I. Do you ken Loch Lomond? Special dear, the owl. It's a lovely song. Please sing it, Oh, Bonnie. Come in, Bonnie. Hi. Bonnie, this is everybody. Everybody, this is Bonnie. My young Bonnie Beck and my young Bonnie Bray When the sun shines bright on Loch Lomond Everybody sing. Bonnie. Mrs. Cameron, this is Mr. Andrew McLeod. My uh, wealthy uncle. How do you do, Mr. McLeod? You sing pleasant, Mrs. Cameron. Indeed. One for the road. <laughs> In three days, you've broken nine dishes. Ten. If Patience doesn't come back to the kitchen soon, we'll be eating out of paper plates. Uh, Susan, I've been thinking. Uh, no remarks. Go on. Eleven. Hmm. Well, Patience is in so solid with her uncle, thanks to us, that he'll leave her half a glass off. Which means I'll lose her. Exactly what's been worrying me. Yeah, well, uh, what to do? I've been doing it. Training Mrs. Cameron to replace Patience. Oh, well, great. Great. Miss Susan, i got a bone to pick with you. Roll at each other, girls. I'm off tonight. This means you too, George. Three on a bone? I want to know how you stand on this Cameron dame. Uh, stand? She made the blankety haggis. Now what? Well, since you bring it up, Patience... Aha! Uh-huh. Well, there's no aha uh-huh about it, Patience. You're going to be a rich woman. We'll need somebody to replace you. Well, like who? Well, you won't want to work as a housekeeper anymore. Who won't? You'll be rich. Well, I'll treat you like an equal. Oh, many, many thanks. It's a democracy. No, no, Patience, it wouldn't work. Besides, it wouldn't be fair to somebody who might really need the job. Bonnie Cameron, I suppose. Well, I... That does it. Well, I've got to have somebody help me. What's wrong with your butler? George, has he got a broken leg? Patience, you're living this idea too much. Besides, we have a newspaper to run on the side. Remember? Who? Well, having no rich uncles about, that's the way I make my living. Hey, what's this? What's this? Not firing. Uh, uh, merely firing Susan, Unc. What? Susan, you're fired. Fine. Patience, don't be silly. You too. Good. Two weeks' pay in lieu of notice, you know. That's the rules, Mom. Uh, just a minute. None of that. None of that. No, think nothing of it, sir. Miss Patience is in the throes of feeling her oats. Eh? A horsey expression. This is the expression the good Lord give me, and I'm proud of it. Miss Patience couldn't stand prosperity, sir. Ah, which brings me to the point I've been coming to this past week. Patience, 
I'm proud of you, Phil. <gasps> Always in there pitching, Unc. It would be an insult and a humiliation for me to burden you with even greater riches than ye already possess. Rich? Who's rich? Oh, dear. So I'm not leaving my estate to you such as it is. Oh. In two words, <coughs> your disinheritance patience? That's three words, but it says it. I. I'm dead. You're looking most high. I'm fatally dead. Uh, Mr. McLeod, uh, this has gone far enough. You've gone far enough. But keep a civil tongue in your head. Susan is just trying to you explain... You too, the patience. Miss patience to you. But patience... You too. Oats. You too sure fixed me. But good. I want silence. Pretty corny. Your can. Canned corn. Both of you. <laughs> house without them, too. Evening, Mom. Miss Susan, George. Yes, ma'am. You sigh it, George. Well, we were thinking, uh, if you'd consider our apology... That... We've been together so long. Yes. Things would never be the same. Leastways with me. <laughs> uh, me, too. Same here. If you'll allow us to see Mr. McLeod, He's we'll... gone. Gone? Where? Uh, Scotland. Uh, where's Bonnie? Gone. Where? Scotland. Oh, oh, how nice. They'll be in Scotland together. Uh, can we come in now? So you wouldn't have inherited Uncle Andrew's loot anyhow. Oh, did not get thrown out of work. But I had to fire you two before you explained to Andy that I really was a poor woman. Anyway, I... Uh... Anyway. Now, can we come in now? You won't get sore at me, Miss Susan. Sore? No, what? Anyway... If I'd kept eating your cooking much longer, I'd have been the first to go, not Andy. Patience. You said you wouldn't get mad. Can we come in now? I, I'm i not mad. But I'm pretty doggone hungry. Miss Susan, you've come to the right place. Well, how about letting us in, then? Huh? It's uh, freezing out here on the porch. It... Uh, 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 oh, gesundheit, to Mr. Harvey. Oh, bless you, George. Oh, thank you. Now, can we come in? I, I don't want to be the first to go. Our stars Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back in just a moment. Get that big okay, a beneficial. Get that big okay for cash today. Just pick up your phone and make a call. When you want cash to clean up bills, buy things, make home improvements, you name it, just call Beneficial Finance. You pick the terms, you pick the payments. So call Beneficial and get that big okay. Beneficial Finance Company. Bonnie Prince Charlie. Oh, he was a prince and he was Bonnie. Oh. All you got to do is ask. Thanks. Uh, Susan. I? Uh, nothing. Go ahead. No, uh, just nothing. Sometimes all you got to do is ask. Susan. Yeah. Just ask, George. Well, Susan, would you cook some haggis for me sometime? Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then.